Hey everyone, welcome back to Seek and Destroy Collects Ghost Rider. This is our Highway to Hell series where we're looking back at all things Ghost Rider. Uh, some of the stuff we're looking at is current. Actually, I recorded my review for the new Ghost Rider number one. I already recorded it earlier today and I figured if I have more time, I'll do another collection video. And this is going to be a big one. This one and the next episode are huge because from 1992 to 1993, there was a lot of stuff with Dan catching it. And I don't even think I have all of it. Like I said, there's a couple cameos he made that I just didn't feel worth, you know, were worth having because he didn't have a big impact on the story or there wasn't a big character moment for him in those crossovers or in that cameo. And I just figured, eh, it's not worth getting. But for the most part, I got, you know, most of his appearances from 1992 to 1993. And uh, we talked about in the first ones, I said to ad nauseum, you know, that uh, Marvel really wanted this character out there and they started putting him in a ton of books. And then now that he's popular and his book is selling so well, they were like, okay, now we got to, you know, put him in other people's books to help those books sell better now. So it was reversed. He was getting put into other books with other characters to prop him up and to get people to like him. And then once they realized they had a hit on their hands, Marvel was like, okay, we got to do, uh, now we got to put him in character books to help them sell. And his book was doing so well they that they launched a second series in 1992 to 93, which is called Spirit of Vengeance, right at the end of uh, 1992. And we're going to talk about that because that's going to tie into an event. So I'm not going to talk about each issue. I'm going to fly through some of these a little faster than I normally have, uh, mainly because this is where like some of my memories get jumbled. I was already bad on the last episode and this one too. If you want in-depth reviews or discussions on these, I'm not the guy to do it, not until I reread them and who knows when I'll get to do that. Uh, so what I'm going to say is go check out the Inner Demons podcast. I'll put a link down below. They're great. They follow everything Ghost Rider and they talk about Johnny Blaze and Ghost Rider 2099 and Dan Ketch and they talk about everyone. They do in-depth reviews and discussions of each comic uh, and they do like a couple, you know, discussion topics each week. So uh, I would say go check them out. Uh, they are much better at diving into this. This is just me going like, hey, here's my collection and here's why I love it. And I'll talk about some story points, but I might get some stuff wrong because I'm going purely off memory off of these books that I, I probably only read one or two times each ever. Um, and that's it. I think uh, once when they came out, obviously, and then the second time, maybe like eight or nine years ago when I started rebuying the collection to complete it. And I just completed it this past May on my birthday. Uh, when I turned 37. Uh, and this is a collection that I started when I was, uh, I think I was like 10 years old when this book came out in the 1990 or you know, close to then. I was like nine or 10 years old. So uh, yeah, it's been a long time. I've been not uh, collecting this series and trying to finish it. So uh, we're going to start off with issue 25. This came out in May of 1992. And that was my cutoff since that was my birthday. I was like, and there was also when issue one came out was like May of 1990. So it's like, all right, I, well, that's what we'll go. We'll go from, you know, May to April and then, you know, go on the next year as well. So here, here we have Ghost Rider 25. We're going to start with this pile first. This was the big uh, Death Watch, you know, culmination storyline. We learned more about Ghost Rider's family, his history, uh, more about Barbara, I think, in this issue too. But it was a big milestone issue and it has a big transformation of Dan Ketch on the cover turning into the Ghost Rider and it looks amazing. Um, then we have, again, Marvel Comics Presents. This series was going on and Ghost Rider still appeared in it. He does, I think, after a couple, I think maybe he's in it for a little bit longer. I think he goes up to maybe issue 140 something, and then Vengeance comes in. So maybe I was wrong in the last episode about him dying down after issue 100. It looks like I still got a lot more in here of Marvel Comics Presents. So yeah, this is him teaming up with Doctor Strange, which he's already done once, but these Sam Keith covers are amazing. Uh, so they do a nice, cool Doctor Strange storyline here with 101, 102, and 103, and I apologize, I don't actually remember what this storyline is. I I don't. I, I know they team up, but I'm, I feel like I'm confusing what's in my head with what happened in the uh, Doctor Strange number 28 issue, which was reprinted as that one shot, which we had and we talked about in the last episode. Um, this is Spider-Man number 22, and I'm sorry for that light glare. I don't think I can do anything about that. I'll try. Um, so there's Spider-Man number 22, Revenge of the Sinister Six, part five. So we saw part one in the previous episode, but part two, three, and four did not feature Ghost Rider or Dan Ketch. So uh, this is now him coming back into the fold. Spider-Man's putting his team together of Sleepwalker, Hulk, and Deathlock, and they take on the Sinister Six. Uh, which is fantastic. This is also the time where Ghost Rider teams up with the X-Men and they fight the Brood. This story I do remember vividly 
because this one I've actually read numerous times. X-Men number nine, Death Neath New Orleans. <laughs> Death Underneath New Orleans. That's pretty awesome. Wolverine versus Ghost Rider. Yeah, and Ghost Rider gets taken over by the Brood, so that's a good uh, battle there. And there's some great stuff with Gambit and Jubilee. Obviously, the X-Men show up. Uh, I think there's a little Bishop side story happening during this too, uh, but these issues are fantastic. I love this Ghost Rider uh, X-Men stuff. It's so good. Um, and I think that's also where the Kubert brothers started getting into comics and they started doing some of the X-Men stuff after Jim Lee, but then jumped over to Ghost Rider, uh, which is fantastic because their art's amazing. Uh, obviously, the, the sons of Joe Kubert, who is a legend in comic books. Um, so more of the Ghost Rider, Doctor Strange team up, 104 and 105. I love that cover. Look how awesome that is. That's so great. And Ghost Rider looks so punk rock there. It's so, he's like all these multicolor, you know, shoes, but you know, high tops on and stuff. That's so good. Um, and then this is Revenge of the Sinister Six, part six. Uh, the conclusion where, you know, Spider-Man gathered his team, uh, the Hulk, Solo, Fantastic Four, Ghost Rider, Deathlock, and they take on the Sinister Six uh, to completion and beat them. Uh, and this is actually a cool little graphic novel here. This is a collection book of uh, the three issues of the crossover between Ghost Rider and X-Men. Brood Trouble and the Big Easy. Um, and this is X-Men and Ghost Rider. So this is a collection of Ghost Rider 26, 27, and X-Men number 9. And I think some pages from X-Men number 8 are also included in here too. Uh, but when I saw this on eBay, I was like, you know what? I know I already have the single issues, but I got to have this too. I mean, I got to put this in the collection. It just looks too cool. And that's a great cover. Um, so again, more Doctor Strange Ghost Rider number 106. And then here, that's the conclusion, I think, of that story. Uh, maybe there's one or two more. I can't remember. Uh, but we'll get to it. But this is Rise of the Midnight Suns. Uh, this was the big event book that that brought a lot of characters that hadn't been used a lot in comics at this point, kind of brought them back. Like Blade uh, tied Doctor Strange a little bit more into this universe, Morbius. And this is where Marvel started creating almost like a dark universe. Uh, they had their main books, Avengers, X-Men, Spider-Man, all the big guys. But then this started to come about. And the Midnight Suns was awesome. And I think you can buy this in a trade paperback now. Um, back when you bought these, though, they were all polybagged. You could actually see slightly, very slightly, a little skull design. Uh, so there's like this. And then here, I'll show you. And then see that it's still in a bag. And the bag has like a skull design on it. And then in this bag, there was a poster. And if you got all the issues, all six parts of the crossover, you could put those post to posters together and make this image which is a poster I have on my wall <laughs> and uh, I've kept it up there. It's the, unfortunately it's a weird shape. So I had trouble finding a frame that fits it perfectly. I'll probably have to get one custom made at some point. Um, but uh, this is kind of what the image it made with all six covers united. And it brings in characters like Ghost Rider, the Spirits of Vengeance, uh, Morbius, Darkhold, Night Stalkers, and Ghost Rider himself in the main book. Um, so yeah, uh, oh, we already said Ghost Rider, but yeah, those are the six issues it crosses over on. So we have part one there and then we have part two here. So Ghost Rider got so popular that they were like, all right, we got to give him a second series. And I think one Kubert brother drew one Ghost Rider book and the other Kubert brother drew this Ghost Rider book. And then I think one went off and then you know, one broke away and did X-Men stuff uh, for a while. But, uh, yeah, Spirits of Vengeance was the second monthly Ghost Rider book that focused more on Dan Ketch and his relationship with Johnny Blaze. Um, so this is where, like, when I think of the show Supernatural, which is obviously a favorite of mine, I got the tattoos all over my arm for Supernatural. Uh, you know, I got demon, you know, uh, protection. I got angel protection. I got the Mark of Cain. Um, and the reason I, I, I just love that show so much, but it reminded me so much of this run of two brothers on the road, hunting monsters, fighting demons, the family business, you know, as they find out, because they discover more about their mother, their fathers, you know, all that stuff, and uh, Mephisto, and it's it's really great. It had a, it was a great run, and uh, I loved it, and that's why I like the new book, which, you go watch my review of that, I'll probably post that after this one, uh, because I'm just weird like that. I want to give people an extra day or two to read and digest the new book. And so in the meantime, we're doing this quick uh, review video or this uh, collection video. Um, so now Ghost Rider, now that he's teamed up with Doctor Strange, the new series Werewolf by Night for Marvel Comics Presents picks up with issue 107. So yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um, it's, you know, Ghost Rider teaming up with a werewolf. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you got, uh, you know, you got a demon from hell and a werewolf, which is great. It's a very spooky kind of fun monster fun you know like universal monster fun uh but it's great and there's like a thanos story in one of them wolverine obviously still on the flip side but that was 107 to 109 uh speaking of wolverine we got another rematch uh guest starring wolverine and the beast 
And this is Andy Kubert doing this one, Joe Kubert art uh, as well. They teamed up on this cover and it's fantastic. Uh, so Ghost Rider, him and Wolverine kind of became friends in a way, but not friends that saw each other very often. But Ghost Rider does kind of interact with the X-Men a couple more times from here on out. Uh, and Wolverine and Gambit again later on. And Angel coming up soon, I think, too. Maybe in the next video. Um, but uh, here he's there with Wolverine and Beast. And uh, the, the art just says it all. I mean, look at that cover. I mean, when I saw these as a kid, I was like, of course I want this. Like, why wouldn't I pick up this book? And, you know, it's like I would work, do yard work or whatever I did. Yeah, I would mow, mow the lawn or, or help out with my brother or whatever. And my mom like, all right, you made five bucks this week. And it's like, well, I don't care. $1.75 of my five bucks is going right to Ghost Rider, like for sure. Um, so, yeah, that one, Spirit of Vengeance number two. And these are kind of in release order. I might Some of them might be a little out of order, but I'm kind of going by release order here. Uh, but I like that. Bang Your Dead. You got him doing the finger gun on the cover. Uh, really sick stuff. I love it. It's good. Um, Ghost, uh, Ghost Rider and the Werewolf teaming up in this one. I can't remember if they changed Werewolf by Night's name or if Werewolf by Night was only in that one issue. And then they brought in the Werewolf after. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, 111 is there. And then 112... And there's a, a backup story with Pip the Troll and Demo Goblin. That's what I loved about Marvel Comics Presents. It was crazy. They did random team-ups. Finally, like a month later, the, uh, more parts of the Midnight Sun storyline came out. So these weren't like, I mean, it was kind of monthly, but there was space in between them. You know, there was a little bit of gap, uh, especially with the Ghost Rider books. Because, you know, you I think there was like, they released that Wolverine book before... I can't remember. It's it's weird. It's like they, they skipped like an issue or something. And uh, and they were like, all right, well, part six of this series isn't done yet. Midnight Suns, it's running late. So we're going to still pump out another Ghost Rider issue. So I think like issue 32 came out before issue 31 or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, but it was crazy, the, the release order. Uh, but we have Morbius number one here. Obviously, he's going to be a star of his own movie coming up. A lot of people want to see him interact with Venom because they did that great Enemy Within miniseries, which we reviewed. And I found to be very enjoyable. I didn't remember liking it that much as a kid, but when I revisited it, I thought it was fantastic. And I really liked the dialogue between Morbius and Venom, and I hope that carries over into the movies if they meet up. Uh, so we have that, Darkhold number one. This was seen in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show and in the Carnage miniseries, or not miniseries, it was like a ongoing that just got canceled around issue 16 or something. We're going to probably talk about that next season on the show, on the Venom show, uh, in season four, but like closer to when the movie comes out, uh, because I definitely want to do a full dive into uh, and discussion videos of that series. But the Darkhold is like this book that is full of evil magic and spells uh, that, uh, you know, is out there and this group tries to get a hold of it. And that gets tied into this Ghost Rider event and it launches Darkhold into its own series, which I think only lasted maybe like 15 to 20 issues, maybe, or maybe less. I can't remember. But uh, either way, issue number one was part four. So this Midnight Suns thing was to launch these other titles and to make you feel, you know, uh, kind of connected to them because you, you were kind of forced to find out what happened to Ghost Rider to read issues one of Morbius and Night Stalkers and Darkhold. Uh, but so if you got those, then you maybe were invested enough to see where those individual stories went with future issues. So that, and it worked on me because I ended up buying a lot of them. Um, Ghost Rider and Captain America, Fear. This was cool. I love Captain America. I did in the early 90s too when I kind of was first introduced to him in the like 89, 90 era. And uh, I, I loved him ever since. And I lo always liked his interaction with the X-Men. I liked how he was like this liaison between S.H.I.E.L.D. and mutant rights and, you know, would talk to Xavier and talk to Cyclops. And there wasn't always like a friendship there, but there was like a mutual respect for the most part. And, uh, and it was Cap trying to stand up for this minority group. And I always liked him for that. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like he's, he's on the side of the mutants, which is awesome. But then to see him go and deal with somebody, you know, a Christian man fighter, you know, from the, you know, the, from World War II era coming in and teaming up with a demon from hell. I was like, yeah, I got to pick up this book. And they fight Scarecrow in it. It's like a self-contained graphic novel, one shot storyline. Uh, but yeah, this one's fantastic. I love it. It's a great, great little book. Uh, you definitely check it out if you can get your hands on one. Um, Ghost Rider number 30. So yeah, so number 30 came out. Completely different story. It didn't have uh, it didn't have the ending to, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the, the Midnight Sun story. Because we have now 29 where Wolverine came in. And now issue 30 with Nightmare, who may or may not be in the next Doctor Strange movie. But we have him here. And uh, we didn't get any, like, uh, you know... It's like, where's the Midnight Suns conclusion? So yeah, they had to you know keep pushing that issue back for some reason. Uh, same with Spirit of Vengeance. Number three came out and we're still not done with the Midnight Sun storyline. It's so frustrating because I'm like, what happened? I'm reading about all the stuff that takes place after and they tried really hard to write stories that were like 
drifting one shot stories that could take place anytime before or after but still it was like come on get the story done man like it's like one more issue um even like marvel comics presents came out you're like ah so you have yeah here a ghost rider team up with iron fist definitely a cool team up the werewolf i guess got popular in that last story so they decided to give him his own short story in the back of this one um so yeah we have more ghost rider and iron fist in 114 also the arabian knight is in this issue finally we get Night Stalkers number one in November of that year. It probably came out a, a little sooner, or right after, or something like that, because the solicits are never like lined up perfectly for the month. But we have part five, and the Night Stalkers is basically Blade and uh, Deacon Frost, I think, and a couple other characters uh, all teaming up to uh, fight against vampires and everything like that. So they're kind of like the group that's going to handle vampires in the universe, even though there was Morbius, but he's kind of dealing with other things uh, and more science-focused stuff too and supernatural things. So yeah, so Night Stalkers kind of brought you in, and that was awesome because that was one of my first... Uh, I think this may be my first introduction to Blade. I can't remember if I read another random issue that Blade was in before this or not, but around this time is where I kind of fell into Blade and became a fan of his, and which is why I was there opening day when that movie came out. And I love the Blade movies, especially the first two. Third one has eh, it has some moments, but uh, it's kind of forgettable for the most part. And then lastly, finally, Rise of the Midnight Suns Part 6, like two months later or whatever. Uh, but still, it came out, and we got it, and it's awesome. And uh, I got the sixth poster and everything, so yeah, that was pretty sweet. And uh, it was a good run, and it introduced us to a lot of characters, including this character, Lilith here, who is going to appear in the new series. They mentioned her in the last uh, in the first issue, and we'll, we talk about that in my other video, so I'll have you go watch that uh, when I post it after this one. Um, so then last, we have this half of the stack, and I'll kind of center it there. Uh, we have a lot to go over here, so let's just speed through these. Spirits of Vengeance number four, Death Watch is dead. Yes, he did die in the books uh, right before the Spirit of Vengeance stuff, and I think, or right into the Midnight Sun stuff. And so now Hag and Troll have decided to come in and you know, be a problem for these two. So yeah, Death Watch is gone. They had to end that story at some point, but I think we see him again later, of course. It's comic books. Uh, Ghost Rider and Iron Fist, again, teaming up in Marvel Comics Presents. We have 115, 116. Um, and then we have a Darkhawk issue here uh, where Ghost Rider invades the pages of Darkhawk. So Darkhawk was a neat character. He, he, he definitely grabbed a lot of people's attention with his look. He was very 90s looking. Even the covers, they were able to do like a chromium cover for the first issue with his armor and stuff or something. Or something like that. Maybe it was issue 25 they did it for. I can't remember. But anyway... He grabbed a lot of people's attention with his look. So they were like, all right, sales are okay. We had Venom in some of the issues. That boosted the sales a little bit. Let's keep that going. Let's have Ghost Rider show up. So Ghost Rider came in and uh, bumped that up a little bit. Then we have Ghost Rider number 32 here, where we have more Doctor Strange. Can Doctor Strange bring Danny back without killing him? Uh, that's a great single storyline there. Uh, very emotional. Uh, Dan is getting to the point where he is not really loving it's already this ghostwriter thing has already caused him a ton of pain and uh, and he is kind of rejecting it in some ways but there's also a chance that, that he doesn't fully know what he's possessed by um, and they need to figure it out so there is some cool stuff in the storyline where they start diving into what really is dan catch and what is his ghostwriter is it the same as johnny blaze is it a deal with satan clearly it wasn't so they got to explore what it is so yeah there's some fun stuff there uh, we have the Web of Spider-Man crossover, which we talked about on the Venom show. So I actually did a full review discussion of this series. If you want to check it out, I'll try to find it and put a link down below. Um, but yeah, this is part one. It took place in Web of Spider-Man number 95. And then Spirits of Vengeance, renamed Spirits of Venom number five, which was part two. Um, then we have more Marvel Comics Presents, Ghost Rider and Iron Fist still teaming up. There's a Ravage 2099 story in the back there and a Doom 2099 story in the back of this one. So they're trying to give some love to those characters uh, while those books were just coming out in 118. We have Web of Spider-Man 96. I love this cover here. And I think that's Texy Area that does that one. That's a good one. Um, but yeah, Web of uh, Spirits of Venom number three, Web of Spider-Man 96. We have that. And then we have the final one here, which I think they made like a little graphic novel with these four issues in them. I don't own it. I should track it down at some point just because it would be cool to have in the collection. But I think this is the cover for the collected one, I think. Um, but anyway, that's uh, now we're into January of 1993 and we got some new books here. We got Ghost Rider 33 and uh, we have Madcap, this villain that comes in and, uh, you know, his dependents. I can't remember if the penance there worked on him, but uh, the stairs of each drive men insane. So they both have this stare that, you know, could screw you up. And so uh, so that was like a nice little thing for uh, 
you know, Dan Ketch at the battle with as Ghost Rider. Um, what if Barbara Ketch had become Ghost Rider? So this is Dan Ketch's sister. I did make that mistake stupidly. I keep forgetting that uh, Dan Ketch's mother's name is Francis, which the newest issue re-reminded me of. Um, Barbara Ketch was his sister, and she died, I believe, in the comics, and she was resurrected, or there was a, a storyline with a, a potential resurrection with her in issue 18 called The Resurrection of Barbara Ketch. But this is, what if that fateful night when Dan Ketch became the Ghost Rider, what if he was the one wounded and his sister was the one that saved his life? So yeah, this is actually a fun little what-if book, and I had to have it. It came out right in January of 1993. Um, we have more, we have Cloak and Dagger teaming up with Ghost Rider in Marvel Comics Presents. I love Cloak and Dagger. These are great characters, and uh, they don't get used nearly enough as far as I'm concerned. Um, Dark Hold number five. I picked this up because the Punisher was in it and Ghost Rider, and the two of them kind of get caught up in what's happening. There is a reference to Maria Castle, a, a potential resurrection of Punisher's family, which if read Savage Vengers, we will talk about at some point on the Venom show. There's just not a lot to talk about because there's not a ton of Venom in it, but I'll figure out a format for it and we'll, and we'll work it out and talk about it. But uh, there was something done like that re you know, recently in Savage Vengers, but this was kind of like, you know, like a hint that that could happen and Punisher wanted to stop it. So um, yeah, this is a dark hold issue. And Ghost Rider shows up. And I think I have two copies. Yeah, there's a second one on the back. Um, Doctor Strange number 50. Ghost Rider is in this one, as long as well as Hulk and Silver Surfer. I think this is the precursor to Doctor Strange creating the team known as the Secret Defenders. And that was a good book because every like few issues, it was Doctor Strange teaming up with different superpowered people to take on a threat. And sometimes he would team up with villains. And also that was a big uh, introduction for me on Deadpool because... Deadpool, I, I just knew kind of him in the early 90s and during New Mutants and stuff. I didn't really read that stuff. I was reading just the two main X-Men books. And then sometimes, like, if they did, like, a Storm miniseries or a Rogue miniseries, I'd pick those up. But for the most part, I just read the two main X-Men books. So, And then some of X-Factor, because uh, Apocalypse was there, because I liked him. But for the for the arrest, I mean, like, New Mutants and stuff and X-Force, I, I kind of skipped over a lot of that. and um, didn't read it till much, much later. Uh, but so this series, uh, Doctor Strange, after this issue 50, it leads into Secret Defenders. Secret Defenders was kind of my introduction to Deadpool. And I was like, eh, he's okay. Yeah, he was fine in it. He was the comic relief. But, um, but he was not in my eyes, not the character that a lot of people know and love today. He was, he was on the verge of becoming that in that series. They did, they had more fun with him than, than he was when he first came out. But, uh, but still, I guess he's always kind of been a mouthy character. And so that never really changed too, too much. Uh, some people remember him being quiet in the beginning, but again, I, I can't really speak on that because my memory of early Deadpool stuff, I'm sure I read those new mutants issues once and that was it. I liked uh, some of the early New Mutants that I read with like um, Bill Sienkiewicz, like his artwork, I and War, uh, Warlock and all those characters, like I and Magma. I liked that stuff, but I read that later, like in my college years. I didn't get to that stuff until much later. Um, Ghost Rider number thirty four here in February. Uh, Spirits of Vengeance number seven here. The Return of Mephisto and the Attack on the Carnival. And the Carnival was this great place full of uh, weirdos and demons and stuff that they get into uh, throughout the Spirits of Vengeance series for the next couple issues at least. Um, and we have Ghost Rider, Cloak and Dagger on um, Marvel Comics Presents 121 and 122. Ah, Dazzler's amazing. Uh, also a speedball issue in here. Uh, and look at the cloak looks great. I like that design. That little creepy hand coming out. It's crazy. Um, this is a reprint of a Fantastic Four issue. I think it's 374. Yeah, and then there's 375, I think will come up. Um, maybe, yeah, there it is. It's in the back. So I think this is 374. They just bring back for one issue this team of Fantastic Four. Remember when Dan Ketch, Wolverine, Hulk, and Spider-Man all became the new Fantastic Four for like a day or two? Um, this is kind of revisiting that storyline for, for one more moment. And it's them kind of fighting against the Fantastic Four, but it, is it really them, or is it like an alternate version of them, or is it just, uh, you know, Doctor Strange in the background there, is there mysticism going on, so yeah, that was kind of fun, so that that's a reprint, obviously, that's not the original, 374, when I went to the comic store looking for 374, I found a copy of 375 for like a dollar, but they didn't have 374, but they did have this on the shelf for one dollar, and I was like, oh, that's a reprint of 374, so that was kind of nice, I was able to still get the story, and that's all I care about, I don't care about the, getting the exact issue, you or the first printing or nothing um unless it's like an actual ghost rider issue or a spirit of vengeance issue other than that it can be a reprint i don't care 
Um, we have 35 here with Ghost Rider 35 versus Heart Attack. <laughs> I guess you can figure out what he does. Um, Spirits of Vengeance number 8 here. Ghost Rider and Blaze ride against the forces of Mephisto. So again, Mephisto has returned after his uh, di disappearance or exile or whatever he went through. Um, but yeah, he's now he's back and he's causing them trouble. And especially taking an interest in Dan Ketch because he's not... Uh, made through a deal. So, there's, you know, there is questions that need to be answered there. Marvel Comics presents 123, Ghost Rider solo story, but then quickly after, a Typhoid Mary crossover, um, who recently showed up in a Venom toy series, which is pretty crazy. She's, I think, typically a Daredevil villain, uh, or maybe someone else's villain. I, I first read her in Daredevil, I think, and then I read her in this, but... Uh, yeah, there you go. And a solo story in there. Here's uh, Fantastic Four 375 with Invisible Woman with a giant gun on the cover uh, and all the Fantastic Four with guns. Um, but they also have like this Super Scroll Lady. I can't, I'm forgetting her name. And these two over here. Uh, Rise of the Doom. Or Rise of Doom. So yeah, that's uh, that's the ending. Ghost Rider's only in it for like a couple pages. And I almost didn't buy it, but I didn't know. So when I picked it up, I was like, I flipped through and I was like, and it's only a buck, you know, maybe you skipped a page or two, just take it home with you, it's only a dollar, um, so yeah, I couldn't complain about that, but it was three dollars when it came out in the 90s, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's, uh, prices haven't gone up that much in, uh, 20 years, uh, but yeah, reg regular comics were a dollar 75, so maybe a little bit, um, but that's bound to happen, I mean, gas and food and everything else has gone up, so yeah, why not comics, I guess, uh, and then also Ghost Rider 36 here, I take on the evil succubus, um, and Mr. Hyde is also in this issue. I kind of like Mr. Hyde. He's a goofy villain, but I kind of liked him. This is the Carnival of Death. They focus on it for two issues in Spirit of Vengeance number 9 and 10. And this is also where they bring in, as far as I know, this is the first appearance of Vengeance. Um, that's this big dude here. And Vengeance is like a, a, a Hulk-sized ghost rider. And uh, we get more into his story. I think Bertinelli or something like that, or Bertolucci is his name. We talked about him in uh, one of the Venom crossovers. And uh, I kind of liked him. You know, I didn't like him at first when he first brought in. I was like, oh, okay, he's just like an evil ghost rider. It kind of like movies do that a lot. Like, I feel like if they make an MCU movie of Ghost Rider, you know, they're probably going to have Vengeance be the villain because that's what they always do. They always, they're always like, all right, it's Iron Man versus Iron Monger, you know, and it's Captain America versus Winter Soldier, you know, or whatever, or Red Skull, who's also went through a Super Soldier program kind of thing uh, before it went wrong. So it's like always someone versus their opposite. So I just, I feel like if they make an MCU uh, Ghost Rider movie, it's going to be like Ghost Rider versus Vengeance. It's like, all right, fine, whatever. Um, but uh, I, you know what? I'll pay to see that because I like Vengeance. And so seeing him on screen would be cool, even if he is just a villain. Um, Ghost Rider Typhoid Mary crossover continues and Marvel Comics presents. We have issue 125 there and 126. Then we have Mystic Wars, <laughs> uh, issue two. I think Ghost Rider only shows up in this for like a panel or two. I can't remember. I was kind of duped into this. So I went off multiple lists online of what to put in my collection. And I came across this and I go, I remember that series because I remember Death's Head, which is that character there. Um, and I was like, I... I remember this, but was Ghost Rider really in it? I picked it up. I was like, yeah, he's in it a little bit, but um, he's not in the whole four issues, I don't think. I think this is the issue he's in it the most. So I picked it up for that reason, but then I read it and I was like, yeah, I really don't need this in my collection, but whatever, I got it. So I guess that's fine. Um, and then the last issue here to end our 1992 to 1993 collection is Midnight Suns Unlimited. So X-Men had an unlimited book. Spider-Man had an unlimited book. I love the X-Men one, issue one. It's a story where Cyclops, Storm, and Xavier go to look for a mutant up in like a blizzard. Uh, and they're going to go, I guess, recruit them to bring them back home. And they find out it's Sienna Blaze who tricked them to come up there. And then uh, Cyclops' you know, visor gets knocked off. Storm has a claustrophobic fit and blacks out. Um, and then Xavier gets knocked out from debris and gets like his head cut. And so, he, so it's just Cyclops dragging his two friends through the snow after a plane crash which is frightening for him because his parents died in a plane crash um, and he's trying to keep them alive during a snowstorm while Sienna Blaze is attacking them and it's probably one of the best Cyclops stories out there in my mind uh, it's awesome <laughs> it's, it made me like Cyclops a lot Spider-Man Unlimited number one introduced the Maximum Carnage storyline so when Midnight Suns got their own Unlimited series, I was like, well, I got to get it because who knows what this is going to launch. It didn't really launch much. I think this book only lasted like nine issues, but each issue would have Ghost Rider in some of them 
and then it would have like Morbius, Dark Stalk, you know, Night Stalkers, Dark Hold, Johnny Blaze, you know, whatever. Anyone supernatural related, it would squeeze in stories of them. So Ghost Rider Dan Ketch was not in every issue. I think I still bought every issue just to be sure, but I don't think he's in every issue. But this number one cover here is amazing. And I had to have it, and it's a perfect way to end. 1992 to 1993 collection and then you can see my whole thing back there this is great uh yeah big big collection here a big year for ghost rider 92 to 93 and there will be more i mean in 1993 to 1994 i think the stack's even bigger if i'm not mistaken so like one of these sizes like one of these stacks i think is like uh, one half of 1993 to 1994 because that's when really Ghost Rider took off. They realized they had a hit on their hands. They killed them for like five issues. They did big crossovers that were like 12 to 16 part crossovers. They were doing so much with the character. So we have a lot to discuss and go over in the next collection video, but we'll wait for a while before we do that one because I crammed a lot of these out this week and I'm, I want to take my time with these. I don't want to go through this whole collection too quickly. So on the next episode, you're going to see me review Ghost Rider number one, which just came out uh, today, the day I'm filming this, October 2nd, 2019. So we'll do a full review of that in the next episode. Uh, so please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. And we'll talk about that episode, you know, that issue. I won't go into too many spoilers, uh, but, uh, but I do talk about some. But I filmed that video already, so it's kind of weird doing these in reverse. But, you know, bear with me. I am I wanted to get this one video out uh, because I was hoping the, the black variant covers uh, that because I get the Ghost Rider number one had a black cover to it, like a black variant. And they did that in one of these Ghost Rider series, but it looks like they did that in the 1993 to 1994 collection. So we'll get to that in the next episode. I was hoping it would be here so I can, you know, be like, hey, see, this is the thing I talked about in the other video. But unfortunately, there's going to be a little bit of gap there. So we'll talk about that next time. Thanks so much for watching the video. Let me know what you think of this collection down below, and we'll get into 1993 to 1994 next time. Uh, probably two or three episodes from now, uh, we'll get back into it. But definitely before issue three comes out, or issue two comes out of the new Ghost Rider series. So, you know, we got a couple weeks to get it done, and we will. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.